I have met the enemy face to face and suddenly the enemy is us. We are our own tormentors blessing the Filipino people. We are our own demons. President Rodrigo Duterte spent one hour and 34 minutes in delivering his fourth State of the Nation address. And as expected, it was not short on reports of accomplishments. I am tired or post the resignation of more than a hundred officials and appointees of government without regard to relationship, friendship, and alliance. Warning to those who will fail to do their jobs. My directive to the government and instrumentalities, including the LGOs and the government corporations, simplify. I've been asking that from you since three years ago. Pag hindi pa din yung nagawa yan ngayon, Patatayin ko talaga kayo. And of course, promises. For it is not the eagle in the fight, but the fight in the eagle that matters. Believe me, I will end my term fighting. And as we assess the Chief Executive Sona, let's also take a look at his cabinet, who are tasked to carry the torch along with the President. What's next for them? All this on today's agenda. We have heard the State of the Nation address of President Rodrigo Duterte. Now the question is, did we hear what we needed and wanted to hear? And now that the President has laid down his agenda, how are his cabinet men and women performing? Are there weak links among the team? I'm Sita Beltran, and that is today's agenda. A political science professor gives us his insights on the president's fourth sona. The fourth State of the Nation address of President Duterte was delivered yesterday. Suffice to say, it is everything we have expected from a Duterte sona since 2016. It is a ritual whose message primarily appeals to his mass and property bases. This is regardless of whether others feel that there are higher, closer to the chest priorities or not. There seems to be a growing acknowledgement of the need to project an image of congressional independence, whether genuine or otherwise. That said, that much of the focus bills came from new Senator Christopher Bongo kind of belies this assumption. Then as now, perceived economic stability shores up the legitimacy of any government, whether or not it is directly responsible for it, and whether or not there are larger crises looming. Filipino society, precarious as our people are, are sadly not unique in this respect compared to the rest of the world. Thank you, Hansley Juliano. Time now for your TLCs, tweets, likes, and comments. Share with us your thoughts on today's agenda. After the fourth sauna, what's next for President Duterte and his cabinet officials? Send us some TLC, tweets, likes, and comments. Text us at 0939-369-9194 or connect with us on Facebook and Twitter at One News PH and use the hashtag agenda on Signal TV. We have a couple of regulars here on Agenda who are going to help us figure out what to make of the sauna and what we can look forward to in the days to come. Let's get to know them. 
a no name in public relations. Amor Maklang is a globally awarded brand architect and a marketing communications innovator among others. She founded Geyser Maklang Marketing Communications Incorporated, one of the top PR firms in the country. Maklang is currently chairman at the Philippine Association for Digital Commerce and Decentralized Industries. Michael Yusinko is a senior research fellow at the Ateneo Policy Center and Institute for Autonomy and Governance. He is also a lecturer at the School of Law and Governance in the University of Asia and the Pacific. Yusinko is also a regular contributor at Business World. Okay, we've all watched the State of the Nation address and uh, uh, a more uh, and uh, Michael, uh, I almost called you Mike, <laughs> Michael, uh, I can't help but feel like every time there's a sauna, we, the Filipinos, we act like it's Malacanang has talent. <laughs> it's like a show. It's like Malacanang's got talent. Everybody has got to put, give an opinion, make an opinion of it, make an assessment. And I think the saddest part of it all was that, and here's my view, please tell me what your experience was like. It's the rich people, the so-called educated, intelligent people, who came up with so much criticism, so much commentary, especially on Facebook. And yet, it is the ordinary Filipinos who don't get the lion's share, who don't get the blessings, they just kind of went on with their lives and, you know, just, hey, it's another day in paradise. Mm -hmm. So, okay, uh, I'll start with Michael. <laughs> Michael, uh, this I know Amor is going to give us a, a mouthful. <laughs> okay, Michael, you first. Yeah, um, I don't necessarily agree with you 100%. Uh, mm. For the first part, I do agree with you that most of the criticisms that the sauna received Mm -hmm. probably, most likely, came from those uh, educated. And the reason for that, I suppose, is that they have access to Facebook, mm -hmm. they have the time, they have the, the, the opportunity to observe the sauna and make judgments. On the second part, that the poor, or the poorest of the poor, uh, do not receive the blessings. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I'd like to qualify that. I'm, I'm yeah. not. Uh, when I said do not receive the blessing, hey, they don't live in guarded villages. They don't have air conditioned room. <laughs> they don't have refrigerators. A and yet, you know, uh, they should be the ones who who should be belly aching. Yeah. But they just move on, you know. Yeah, f for sure. Um, that's uh, the the situation. But. Mm. That's, that has been the situation <laughs> for yeah. the past year. So mm -hmm. it's no different uh, from mm -hmm. the past saunas. What I'm trying to point out is uh, what's different from the sauna, I suppose, is that at least the government has something tangible to present mm. in that, terms of that economic, I'm not, that I'm economic, not uh, I'm economic not uh, gains. Mm -hmm. So yeah. for that, uh, some, of the, some of our lesser uh, blessed uh, compatriots mm how to improve their lives so that should that should be sila yung maingay did you get me I, I guess I think what I'm trying to say is you know every presidency every sauna it's and I'm sorry to say this I promise I'm not going to use words that are Duterte like but you know it's the rich who bitch <laughs> Okay. And, and, now please and stop dirty t <laughs> no, yeah, ser Seriously, you know, the rich bitch, but I, I you know, I last time, um, you know, I, I was with a grab driver and I said, you know, I, I wish they'd stop bitching and start doing more for the poor people, send people to school, etc. Uh, it, it's like, you know, hey, I'm sick and tired of your economic assessment, your Harvard or your Stanford, you know, uh, thesis on what the president said. I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe I just woke up on the wrong side of bed. I was going to say, right? I mean, this sounds like a, what have you done to Arcito and uh, where is he this morning? Um, I think the reason why uh, the, uh, the poor are not belly aching or bitching is because they're actually happy. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the numbers are there, guys. I mean, optics aside, right, uh, the, the commitment and the investments that this government has done to uh, 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 public works, whether they be flood mitigation um, or the regularization of employees close to 500,000, right, uh, the, uh, uh, the 
conditional cash transfer program is at an all-time high at close to 10 million. Mm -hmm. I mean, th it's just improving for the people on the spot, right? I mean, of course, there are certain areas that I was hoping that the government would act on uh, that directly impact the poor. Like, for example, there was absolutely no mention of the 5 million housing backlog, right? In well, he did mention, the president did mention, I need your help addressing all Filipinos yes. across the board. I need your help to lift 6 million Filipinos out of extreme poverty. Yes. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I, I think what got me, Michael, in the entire sauna was not the politics, not the legislative agenda. What got me was when, we, when he said, I have seen, I have met the enemy, <laughs> and the enemy <laughs> is us. I have been saying that for so long. We are the enemy. Mm. We won't share. We don't care. We just opinionate. Yep. And, and, and that goes for media as much as for the academia, for, for the business industry. Go yeah. ahead. You're holding your breath. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I agree with you 100% that maybe more of us have thought that uh, mm -hmm. uh, reality or that, that has been in our minds for yeah. the past years. But thinking about that is one thing, but really addressing it or mm -hmm. uh, responding to it is another. Mm -hmm. And the point here is that we haven't responded to that observation uh, properly. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking about solutions that actually does, does not address that kind of thinking. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the president said we are more inclined to, to be greedy and, yeah. and recognize uh, uh, the needs of others, right? Mm -hmm. But we've been like that for the past uh, decades, and uh, what have we done to correct that? Mm -hmm. Education, media, mm -hmm. our government, our society, our families. Mm -hmm. So, well, we that was the catharsis that he's talking about. Maybe at, at my age, I'm going through that myself, where I'm challenging and asking myself, you know, uh, what do we need to do to change? Uh, what sort of catharsis? Because it scary uh, more. It scares me what he what he kind of referred to. Uh, do does blood need to be shed? You know, I I'm, you boys are so testosterone this morning. Huh? <laughs> um, uh, I actually picked up a different vibe from yesterday, Sona. I felt. Uh, I felt like what I've been hoping for the longest time is finally coming to bear. The second half of the Duterte administration is not going to point fingers, but rather is going to try to bring people together. I mean, they could have very easily said, you know, um, they could have easily pointed out to certain divisive factors in the government, which has not ceased, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And yet, despite that, he, he brought on the onus of bringing the country together on all of us. So I felt that that was actually, I think this might herald, I could be wrong, of course, this might actually herald the second half of the Duterte administration where he could finally become the leader, not just for the majority, but the leader for all of us, even those who are trying to bring him down. Well, how, what does your vibe, or as Amor put it, uh, what, how, how did you respond, or what impression did you get from the sauna? Uh, <laughs> It was uh, uninspiring, actually, mm -hmm. with due respect to the word. Okay. <coughs> it was no, uninspiring. No. It was almost formulaic. For oh, okay. Why do you say that? Because if you remember my opening statement, is every sauna a version or episode of Malacanang's Got Talent where we judge the performance, okay? Because uh, I heard a few people say that, and I'm like, what? It's, it's a state of the nation. I mean, is it real or not, what he said? That, uh, is it reflective of the Philippines or not? I can't say that it's reflective of the Philippines uh, with 100% certainty. Mm -hmm. Certainly some of what he said is reflective of our society, mm -hmm. especially with the, the, thing, uh, the point uh, that you raised. But w what I'm saying that is uninspiring is that the president did not say anything new. I mean, everything that he said there was expected of him. So mm -hmm. the first thing that he did was highlight the wipeout of the opposition, right, in the mm -hmm. recent election. So okay. that was expected. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
my my question is why why even raise that right if if uh, mm -hmm. if if, uh, if you want to move forward right and the second thing is uh, he said that he will educate the the opposition the, no the community the us uh, yeah. about his decision to be uh, sort of a concession uh, to give concessions to to China and yet. He didn't really say anything okay. new. So is, is, anything it, is it? And you know, uh, I, I'm just being the moderator now. Um, is this the reaction of many people because they simply wanted to hear something else? Hold the thought. We'll go for a break. <laughs> okay, catch your breath. When we return, more discussion about the plans of the Duterte administration. And when we come back, I'm going to start um, picking on the topics. And some of you might have a bad morning after this. <laughs> President Rodrigo Duterte has once again called on the Congress to pass several priority bills. Duterte emphasized the need to bring back death penalty specifically for heinous crimes. However, the drugs will not be crossed unless we continue to eliminate corruption that allows the social monster to survive. I respectfully request Congress to reinstate the death penalty for heinous crimes related to drugs as well as plunder. For national security, the Commander-in-Chief again revived the call for mandatory ROTC for senior high school students. He also asks lawmakers to reform the pension system for the country's uniformed personnel. Public school teachers and nurses in the country have also been given a glimmer of hope. To the teachers, alam nito who toil and work tirelessly to educate our young. Kasali na po dito yung hinihingi ninyo. Hindi na siya doon malaki, pero it will tide you over during this hard time. A little bit bigger than before. This is intended to increase salaries of national government workers, including teachers and nurses. Train 2, or the Trabajo Bill, has also been highlighted by Duterte, which seeks to reduce corporate income tax and rationalize tax incentives. I therefore implore Congress to immediately pass Package 2 of the Comprehensive Tax Reform Program, or the Trabajo Bill, which has gradually lowered the income incorporate income tax and rationalize the unimproved fiscal incentives. It will energize our MSMEs and encourage them to expand their business and hopefully generate, hopefully, I'm going to do this in the words of me. Para sabihin na, your old talk, hopefully 104 million jobs in the coming years. The president also wants barangay officials to have more time to finish their projects, as he suggests to postpone the elections to 2022. Meanwhile, critics have noticed that the president seemed to miss out two of his campaign promises, the security of the new bill and federalism. We're back on the program agenda. I'm Sito Beltran, and we are uh, giving our inputs regarding the SONA. So, I left with you, uh, Michael. Yeah, yeah. Um, we were talking about uh, his uh, education of us about the West Philippine Sea. Okay. Uh, obviously, we were all expecting some clarity mm -hmm. of our position. And when, I, when I say our, I'm talking about mm -hmm. the Philippines. Mm -hmm. But uh, from what I gathered yesterday, I did not see any clarity at all. Okay. Uh, uh, I remember an author, I think the bridge to San Ray or something, where the character said, the hardest, to, the hardest person that you can uh, make see things is the person 
who is not blind but refuses to see. Precisely. You know, I, I, I'm uh, sorry, I'm going to have to, to butt no, in. No, don't pick on him. <laughs> okay. No, not at all, not at all. No. Because, seriously, how can we expect such a complicated issue as the uh, West China Sea issue to be resolved in a sauna. The sauna is basically a highlight, is to highlight what the administration has done. And you cannot take that in its singularity. You have to, yeah. you have to compare it vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, the work that the government has done, which harkens back to our topic this morning, which is, let's take a look at how the various departments of uh, uh, the Duterte administration has performed, right? Mm -hmm. Then the sauna will make sense. The, the, because the, the, you know that they're the, the, not good with optics, Yeah, what right? I was trying to tell Michael is this. Mr. President said, it's ours. The West Philippine Sea is ours. But we must temper it with reality. We don't have the gunboats. We don't have the armada. We don't have the firepower. We can't even develop them. And you remember the saying that, that goes, you know, if you, if you, if you don't uh, use it, you lose it. And, and that's exactly what happened to us in the Spratleys and all these other yeah. islets. But, but that's just stating the obvious, you know. Okay. So what, what I think many of us are expecting, give us some clarity moving forward. Mm -hmm. We're not expecting that all of these issues will be resolved. Obviously, okay. it can't be done. But at least tell us, number one, so is the Philippines now, not just him, mm -hmm. is the Philippines now fully committed Mm -hmm. to abide by what China says mm -hmm. and then tell us why Th that's the only thing that uh, we are, uh, at least me mm -hmm. uh, that uh, I was looking for that mm -hmm. because I don't expect I don't expect the president to be able to uh, give us a really a comprehensive uh, mm -hmm. a, uh, strategy but at least some clarity of where our foreign policy is going mm -hmm. because uh, we're going to Twitter <laughs> no, I actually... <laughs> you, you, you missed the joke uh, 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 more. Okay, because our secretary, actually, our secretary of Foreign Affairs is always on Twitter. Uh, which okay. I like, which is actually quite refreshing, right? Okay. Um, no, but uh, it's, it's actually quite clear what the, the, the government's foreign policy is, and mm. this is actually what I... It goes back to what you said. The people who refuse to see mm. are the ones that are hardest to show things to. Mm. Um, the policy is all about co-opetition, right? It's not about, and, and the idea of focusing on, you know, more Western, an American-oriented type of politics, which unfortunately was what I was taught in university, mm. right? I graduated with a degree, a useless degree in political science. Mm. And, um, but I'm telling you, right now, it's the era of Asia. It's the era of China, India, etc. And the fact that we are beginning to have a cogent policy that's oriented to where the rest of the world is really focusing to harkens to, to a foreign policy that I think is relevant to the times. I think we're all looking for complicated explanations, uh, you know, sci uh, science or political science book answers. The president simply said it's traditional fishing rights. I mean, we all shared that era before, we all exactly. fished there before. Uh, and I'm not attacking you, Michael, well, because no, no. I really appreciate you being the, the counterpoint to the discussion. Uh, I guess what I'm pushing at is, have we be, uh, are Filipinos or, or the educated elite of this country who has all the, the noisemakers, have we gotten to the point where we just can't see reason anymore because this is our definition of terms and this is Duterte's definition yeah. of mm -hmm, terms and mm -hmm. the, ro the, 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 the train mean. shall never yeah. meet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I uh, understand what you're trying to say. Yeah. Let me put some meat into this uh, discussion. So, okay. let's say what the president said is a clear indication of uh, what our foreign policy is, mm -hmm. right? We're looking towards Asia, particularly China. Mm -hmm. But then if, if you recognize that, if you accept that, decisions that come after that declaration will be affected, mm -hmm. right? Okay. For instance, in our uh, military build-up, yeah. is our uh, recognition of China as our main partner, mm -hmm. does that mean we, we turn our backs away from our traditional allies, okay. like the U.S., who is currently in a sort of a trade war, uh, not sort of, but actually in a trade, trade war, war. Mm. 
Australia, mm -hmm. even ASEAN. Mm -hmm. Are we going to turn our backs against them? Mm -hmm. Because uh, we already have uh, a declaration that we are now focusing our attention on China. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, but what do you say to the fact that the U.S., uh, here I think is where Duterte is coming from. You're my traditional ally. I went to you to buy guns. Your Congress denied me those guns. He went to uh, Canada. They denied us the choppers <laughs> at the peak of battle, mind you. Uh, we were fighting a, a uh, anti-terrorist uh, battle in Malawi, and and so I'm, I'm saying like. If you can't trust your best friend, can you blame yeah. the guy for uh, going actually, to the order the people, store? I've been informed by yeah. soldiers on the ground mm. that at crunch time, mm. it was really the U.S. who delivered mm. for us. I, I work closely in Marawi. So. I clo work, my dear, I work uh, closely in Marawi, and I have a contrary mm. uh, report on the matter. But I think what we... What Professor, it need not really be a black or white thing. It's not really uh, um, China and or uh, uh, Australia. I mean, you mentioned that he's abandoning ASEAN. I don't think so. Actually, mm -hmm. there's more of a focus to de develop the BIM EAGA, a great program of then President Ramos that mm -hmm. has lain dormant in the past administrations and now is beginning to take shape, right? Uh, direct flights coming out of Davao, uh, no, now more dynamism. Malaysia's talking about how uh, you know the Philippines uh, can now be better integrated with Bitong, which is only four hours away from Jansan, right? So it, it's different. I'm, I'm, it's so you're not convinced it's just abandonment; no. it's just options. Okay, let's do focus. a break. Yes. Okay, we focus when we come back yep. because some of the provision or the things that the president asked in the sauna, I said is going to really piss off some people in Philippine society. More chat with the more McLeod and Michael Yusinko after the break. President Duterte did not mince words when he chided some government agencies over poor service during his fourth sauna. Based on complaints received by this contact center, Bayan, contact center Bayan, that's in my office. The LTO, SSS, BIR, LRA, and pag are the top five agencies that need to drastically improve their service. I've been asking that from you since three years ago. Pag hindi pa din yung nagawa yan ngayon, papatayin ko talaga kayo. He made the remark as he touted the intentions of the ease of doing business law, a.k.a. an attempt to simplify all government transactions. Also in his speech, the chief executive once again floated the proposed creation of a department of OFW and a water department. Duterte meanwhile added color to his renewed push for the establishment of a department of resilience. Okay, so keeping track of the day's agenda on One News, I'm Sito Beltran. Okay, Amor and Michael, uh, the, the President asked for a lot of things from Congress, and as you saw in the BTR, he chided, actually he didn't just chide, he basically said, yeah, he, called uh, out he called out the three, LTO, SSS, BIR, BIR, LRA, LRA etc. Now, um, okay, he asked for the passage of the Trabajo Bill, which has been renamed the Corporate Income Tax and, uh, how do you call it, uh, there's a... Reduction? Reduction of... Uh, corporate Income Tax. No, no, not just Corporate Tax, because they have incentives. Incentives uh, rationalization. rationalization. Which, you know, like if you relocate to a certain place, uh -huh. you get pioneering status, etc., etc. Or to invest in certain industries. Yeah. Now, I know for a fact that there are many businesses or businessmen who don't like that. So that's number one. And then 
He called for the reclaiming of all public roads. Yeah. Now you live in uh, Legaspi village, you live in Catipunan, <laughs> and you live in uh, Katipunan, and I live in Pasig. And, and in the Philippines, the reality is we, we, we've gone down to street associations. One long street has two gates and two guards, 24-7. And, and I have a funny feeling if Secretary Anyo actually implements this to the letter, all roads are open and I venture a more some of the exclusive villages might find the roads <laughs> forcibly open. What are your reactions? You know, to every this? time I drive down McKinley Road from Makati to BGC, I tell myself, thank God. Can you imagine when, do you even remember the time when that was an exclusive street used only by a privileged few? Number one, I'm not going to be affected by it, so that's the first. Mm. Second, the opening up of roads to everyone I think is something that we need to welcome. Um, we need to support the efforts of the DOTR to try to decongest traffic. Mm -hmm. I mean if there's one uh, department that I feel is doing a good job, it's a DOTR. Mm -hmm. um, this government might not be very good in terms of presenting itself and in terms of optics, mm -hmm. but the creation of Secretary Tugade of so many options for new transport. Mm -hmm. So whether it's a TNVS uh, uh, via ANCAS or now he just signed recently uh, the hatchback. He, he hatchback. approved the hatchback. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, okay, but here's the thing. Tugade is doing a great job, okay, but what about Anyo? You know, no, no, seriously, you know, some people have asked, Sito galit ka ba Anyo? No, I don't even know how he looks like. But here's the thing, like, they, they were supposed to open up Camp Aguinaldo uh, as a pass-through. And then next thing you know, oh, we need stickers, oh, we need security clearance, oh, we need this. And then bandang hole, people said, just forget it. Kung ayaw niyo magpadaan, wag na lang. So, uh, with the President's declaration, you know, reclaim all public roads, okay, I can already see that this will ease traffic, yes. Michael. Yes. So the key point there is that the declaration only covers public roads. Mm -hmm. The problem in our system, we've divided our road system between public and private. Mm -hmm. So the private roads, uh, that's what you're talking about, mm -hmm. those uh, roads that are in uh, closed villages, mm -hmm. that will be a totally different matter. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you need some court action there mm -hmm. for them to open up their, their gates. Mm -hmm. But for the public roads, yeah, I'm 100% behind that uh, directive. Mm -hmm. And I know actually, I, 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 do, I don't know, no, no, but yeah. I've observed him uh, closely. Yeah. And my impression of him is that he, he, he's very receptive to what the problems that need to be addressed. Yeah. He's so receptive. He issues a memorandum <laughs> and it dies there. I'm <laughs> sorry, Secretary <laughs> Anyo. But so you know, I, I've always believed in what your office can do. But you know, like the tricycles. Get them out of the highway. <laughs> They're still there. You know, uh, no more pass through stickers. They're still there. And now the president says, uh, recover public roads. Yeah. So going back to the public roads, I think the secretary can do something about that because mm -hmm. that's really directly within his purview. Mm -hmm. uh, con in contrast to the tricycles, mm -hmm. that's within the direct purview of local government. So, yeah. no, although public roads are also local government, Michael. Uh, uh, again, there's a Mayors. there's a subdivision there. So, public mm -hmm. roads that are national in scope. Mm -hmm. It belongs to the national government, yeah. and the no, no, no. let's let's be clear. Subdivision is private, okay? Unless it is the state that actually pays for the, yes, yes, the yes. pavement, etc. No, I'm ta the roads, public roads. There's a subset to that, mm -hmm. meaning uh, some of the public roads, um, the jurisdiction over them belong to local government, yeah, yeah. and some belong to the national. National, yeah, okay. So that that is where the DALG can come into mm -hmm. play. And I think uh, the secretary or DILG can do a good job there, and uh, I hope they do. You know, that worries me already. Michael's explanation, uh, and no offense, man, is confused because uh, that will become the basis for local government officials uh, arguing. No, 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 this is not national road. You cannot uh, interfere yeah. here. But I think the president meant on roads that belong to yeah, the public. Yeah. That's what happened to Ed Sarai. 
mm. the full length of EDSA. Yeah. So the local governments uh, were, were saying, no, that's not, that, that portion, mm -hmm. that's not our responsibility because mm -hmm. that's EDSA. Is it really the words we're talking about here, gentlemen? It, what aren't we, what we're really trying to tackle is the issue of traffic. And what the government is actually doing is creating a confluence of solutions. Mm. So whether it's the liberating of roads or uh, uh, better options for transport or even say for example the DPWH yeah. creating more roads for us in greater connectivity. I think no, that's no, we yeah, should be I think all, all of that's there already, Amor. But I think it's refreshing that the president pointed out public roads because public roads have been, so much of it has been lost you try to go to Makati after 10. You're going to need ways and you're going to have a lot of, need a lot of patients because they start closing gates. And I said, is this a private village? It's not. It's public. Uh, Marikina, Quezon City, everywhere. We, I think, we the Filipinos have taken over the roads. And then we complain, wala, puro na lang traffic. Walang pupuntahan yung mga sasakyan eh. And, and that, I think, is the point of the present. Yes. But, let's move on. Okay. What's the one thing that you think, that, what's, what did President Duterte, in terms of your uh, perspective, that, that he asked for that could be controversial or will find resistance? Wow. Should I start? Yeah, yeah please. Right, Michael. <laughs> So uh, for me, I think uh, number one is death penalty. Mm -hmm. uh, my issue there is that there are <laughs> already existing studies that mm -hmm. say that the death penalty is not an effective deterrent to crime. Mm -hmm. So um, obviously, uh, that kind of uh, proposal will meet some resistance. Mm -hmm especially from the church and mm. obviously the academe because mm -hmm. they have uh, those studies in hand. The second I think would be... Uh, you know, it's interesting you mentioned that because we have that argument in my, in my house about the death penalty and, and I'm for the death penalty, okay? And my perspective is we are in the ASEAN region, we have an ASEAN culture, we, Asian culture, we have an Asian reality and that's why most if not all of our neighbors in Asia have the death penalty. Because we are not as advanced, developed, and civilized like the Western, and this anti-death penalty proposition is purely a Western uh, experience. I, I agree and disagree with you in the same breath. Mm -hmm. I agree when you said that uh, the culture here in, the, in Asia and ASEAN does not necessarily subscribe to, um, say for example, what I term are Western cultural impositions. I mean, mm -hmm. even this discussion of human, personal human rights versus collective good, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone's complaining about it. And, and you can tell who has a very Western bias and who has a very Asian bias. I mean, mm -hmm. we in Asia, we actually support a strong type of governance. Tell me uh, a government in Asia that does not have a strong man and that has worked. Mm -hmm. China, for all that you say about China, it works. When was the last time you were there? I was there last month. Wow, it's even better than most cities that I've been to in the United States. Mm -hmm. It works, right? Um, and, and, and what I don't agree with what you said, Sito, is mm. that we here are not as advanced or not as developed. What I'm no, actually not, saying no, when I say as advanced or developed is, look, their, their infrastructure, their tax system, their, their population, they have the it's capacity different. to support imprisonment ah, yes, and yes, rehabilitation and, and detention. That I agree. But there, we don't. It's, it's a different bias. It's a different cultural context mm. that I hope we stop trying to impose on Asian countries, right? So Agreed. that's why if you go around all over uh, ASEAN, mm -hmm. there's massive support for the current government. Michael, it, the death penalty was once passed in this country, okay? And back then, it wasn't as serious. The crime, crime wave mm -hmm. then was not as serious as when Duterte came into office. Now, what do you think are the chances this death penalty will pass and will stay? I don't, th I don't think it has a good chance of passing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, th I still, although I recognize the merits of the proposal, mm -hmm. uh, 
I don't think uh, Filipinos... Even when the Senate President himself said, I am not pro-death, but I have come to terms with the reality and will make an exception. I, I remember him saying that yeah. to me. I am make, willing to make an exception. And, and Tito Soto is yes. very Catholic, very... Uh, that's, that's what I mean, I agree with the merits of the proposal because it has been limited to crimes involving drugs mm -hmm. and also plunder. plunder yeah. So I recognize that Mm -hmm. That could be something good, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, broadly, I think our society will not support a uh, death penalty mm -hmm. um, pre precisely because of the bad memory mm -hmm. of what happened to... I remember Echagaray. Echagaray. Mm -hmm. I watched it and mm -hmm. uh, it was traumatic for me. I was mm -hmm. in, in college at that time. It was very traumatic for me uh, mm -hmm. how they handled it. And mm -hmm. The second traumatic thing is that the very first person who was convicted mm -hmm. under that death penalty law was later on acquitted. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a bad experience of it, as you said, mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, many of our, uh, my age mm -hmm. are still traumatized by that, and I think the proposal will not uh, get the support it needs to, to get passed. L l let's address, you know, let's call a spade a spade. I mean, that's why there are 6,000 dead Dragadics. According to... <laughs> no, the PNP, the <laughs> today I said 5,000 something, the PNP said 6,000, but that's why there are 6,000 Dragadics, because the police know that these people are going to fight it out. So, I mean, if we don't have death penalty, we don't have uh, a chance for them to go to jail and go to the court, then it all ends in bloodshed. So, I mean, it's the same way. Either, either way, it's the same. If, if, we, if we begin to think that way, Sinto... Mm -hmm. No, I'm not beginning to think that way. It is that way. Uh, if, if you're saying that we already think that way, mm -hmm. then you have a bigger problem, because mm -hmm. uh, what about ideals like rule of law? Respect for your fellow man. Yeah, but there is such a thing as they, they now call silent affirmation. The Filipinos and there is also uh, precisely Filipinos my are saying, "Hey, there's peace and order." Everything precisely is my discussion earlier. Rule of law. Well, I, I won't go into rule of law. Personal liberty over the collective good. Right. Mm -hmm. Once again, a very Western and a very Asian juxtaposition of ideas clashing. So whenever I see the rich who bitch to quote Sita, those are not my That's words, right? right? Quoting me. Right? <laughs> quoting, quoting Sita, right? Um, but when the rich bitch, it's really uh, a cognitive bias that's out there, right? Uh, because a lot of our educational system, right, and I'm a victim of it, mm -hmm. it's very oriented towards a Western way of thinking that unfortunately does not really apply to our Asian context. Okay, okay you guys focus on the death penalty. Look, go, the President also asked for certain things that I think are great and reasonable. Like Let's three talk days. about that. Let's talk about this that process. after the break, yes. okay? And the recap of the opening of the 18th Congress yesterday when we return, keep it here on the agenda. <laughs> The elections for leaders of the two chambers of Congress went smoothly yesterday. No coup d'etats or plot twists this time around. In the race for the House Speakership, 266 votes were cast in favor of the former Senator and Foreign Affairs Secretary. Against the 28 votes received by Manila Representative Bienvenido Abante, who was then proclaimed as the House Minority Leader. Lito Atienza and Manuel Cabochan of Buhay and Magdalo Party lists respectively abstained from voting, while Representative Ed Salagman of Albay casted a no vote in the speakership. Later, Solon Martin Romualdez was elected majority leader, while first-termer Davao lawmaker Pulong Duterte was named one of the deputy speakers. Now, for Senate presidency, there wasn't much of a race, as Tito Soto was re-elected unopposed through Viva Voce. Senator Juan Miguel Zubiri, who was then elected Senate Majority Leader, nominated Soto, saying that he was the best man for the job. 
Meanwhile, Senator Ralph Recto was re-elected Senate President pro tempore, and Senator Franklin Drillon remains minority leader. Senators who abstained from voting were Drillon, Kiko Pangilinan, and Risa Hontiveros. Senators Leila De Lima, who is detained on drug charges, and Senator Manny Pacquiao, who recently won over Keith Truman in Las Vegas, were not able to vote. We're about to wrap up the day's agenda here on One News. I'm Cesar Beltran. Okay, more. You wanted us to take, go away, walk away from this uh, <laughs> discussion about and, death penalty. And, and focus on things that truly matter to okay. people like us on the spot. Mm. Um, number one, I'm very happy that uh, the president talked about how business permits m must be out in three days. I mean, we have never had an administration that took seriously uh, ease of number one, ease of doing business. Second, the DTI is doing a fantastic job in um, uh, energizing MSMEs. Access to loans, right, for one. Um, even technology. I mean, I have a lot of work in technology. You know that, CETO. Mm. And um, uh, the government is putting in place enabling, uh, enabling legislation that will actually make us more teched up, right, mm -hmm. as a country. Uh, everyone's saying, more, but the DICT is actually um, being being run by a non-techie, maybe we need a non-techie to fi finally put into place uh, mm -hmm. a system that will integrate all of Actually, I, I like what he said, you know, telling the telecoms to uh, ah. focus on the underserved. Yes. Because if they focus in the underserved areas, tourism will also pick up. There's so many beautiful places in the country. Absolutely. That will pick up. But right. Michael, what did you like or what do you support in the legislative agenda of the president? Number one, I support, I fully support what all of the, what Amor said. And number two, all of the economic reform bills, mm -hmm. and the whole entire package, mm -hmm. uh, I think should be given serious consideration yeah. by mm -hmm. Congress. But Sito, I, I, I wouldn't be uh, true to myself, I didn't mention this, but uh, what really disappointed me about the sauna mm -hmm. is something that the president did not say in the sauna. Okay. And that is uh, provide some clarity and coherence on charter change. Mm -hmm. Although he mentioned that in the press con, but in the press con, he didn't offer any clarity and coherence as well. So that to me is very disappointing because I would have thought... Uh, I think he answered that. There is a time... <laughs> Precisely. So every exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> is that, exactly. Is that a signal, for for instance, to the DILG, the interagency task force? Mm. Is that a signal to ho hold off first and let's focus on economic reforms? Yes, is that exactly. a I think that's the direction. Yeah, because, okay. you know, uh, in fact, Orly Mercando was with us yesterday. He, he was my co-host uh, on the sauna. And, and he, point, he was really r waiting and raring to hear the president mentioned land use law yes and the president said it he said I want a science based yes. land use policy yes. so, so remember uh, that inter the federalism initiative received or got a huge budget mm -hmm. so that's why it's important for me uh, for clarity and coherence mm -hmm. where this initiative is going uh, forward so mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. you, it's your opinion that it's a signal to, to the administration to put that aside and mm -hmm. let's focus on all the reforms. No, no, no. it is a signal. That I'm not going to talk about that can of worms yes. during the sauna. Let, exactly. let the Congress exactly. deal with it. Now, two quick things that I think I, 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 I was hoping you gentlemen would raise. Number one, you saw my woke John, na, nasa Facebook. How come you didn't mention the fact that the president actually mentioned use more renewable energy? So for me, that's a strong signal. I, I would like to commend the DOE okay. in not. terms of, you know, despite the fact that everyone is getting scared about the low, uh, uh, the, the impending crisis with power, they did not approve coal plants. And yet they are still continuing to promote you, renewable. You know, I'm listening that. to you and Michael. This is the yin and the yang, okay? And I'm the guy trying to figure out where to face each of you, okay? But this is what worries me. And we've got three minutes. I need a real answer, okay. short answer from both of you. Do you believe that the president's assigned cabinet members, Kusi, Anyo, 
uh, to God. Uh, well, to God is already doing a Herculean job. Yeah. But, but you know, all these other guys who are uh, uh, gringo, okay? Do you think they'll actually be able to deliver? I'm hopeful with the DICT. I'm not going to make any pronouncements there. But if the national ID is unlocked by the DICT, I'm telling you a lot of the things that we're going through, starting with corruption, mm -hmm. will be addressed. How come we didn't mention the DOH? I hope the DOH will finally shape up. We actually have several crises in front of us, health crises, mm -hmm. and yet, you know, there's still I a think the DOH secretary was fortunate enough that he didn't get targeted I was going to say, right? Okay, now, Michael, what about you? Are, uh, are you convinced or confident that this I, cabinet... I hesitate to make any uh, assessment mm -hmm. uh, for now. Um, I'm hopeful, as Amor is, about particular secretaries. Like, mm -hmm. like cool. Contrary to you, I'm particularly hopeful uh, that Secretary Anyo will deliver. A correction, okay? I am equally hopeful, <laughs> but doubtful. <laughs> because of his track record, yeah. okay? Uh, because he, he gives the orders from the top and it never hits the ground. And I think that's his issue. He's got to get his people to send, get down there on the ground. Anyway. Uh, but, uh, the, the, partic the specific secretary that I'd like uh, you know, to sit down and reflect is the Secretary of Foreign Affairs. I think uh, he should stop tweeting policies or mm -hmm. views mm -hmm. that could really reflect uh, a, neg a negative perception about what this government guys, does. That's the right guys, I mean, no, aren't you I'm glad you have a DFA secretary who has balls? No, 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 but I think the president actually put him in, in his place in the last, when he made the, the president, the Philippines will never cut diplomatic mm, yes. ties. With when Ireland. the president oh, said, Iceland. you know, uh, the cabinet members may be my, my counterpart, but they don't speak for me, I think that was yes. it. But anyway, thank you, uh, Amor and uh, <laughs> Michael. Thank you, always. Very interesting morning. And that was your first look at the day's agenda. Uh, personally, I would encourage all of our viewers, sincerely, please pray for all our cabinet members. And uh, mine, my special uh, pick right now would be the DICT. Because if we can roll out the internet speed in this country. And the ID. In, and the ID, as more said, the business in this country and education and public services services would double if not triple in the blink of an eye. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter at One News PH. I'm Sita Beltran. We are One News.